Deepika Bedi from Happiness is Love here for you to share with you how to bust exam anxiety. And this video is not just for students, it's even for parents, for teachers, for educators, because we all know that we need to offer support and help those who are struggling with exam anxiety. Every student who aims to become a high achiever will experience exam stress. This is a given and it's universal. It's an unavoidable part of being a student, being a part of student life. And I know it's sometimes hard to crack the code. That's why we have made this video so that it can help everyone watching this video to cope better with exam anxiety and stress. Firstly, remember that stress exists for a reason and you can choose to let it be either your downfall or use it to drive you, to propel you and to improve your work. In certain degrees and in small doses, stress is actually good because it helps us by propelling us towards our goal. However, the problem is when it gets unmanageable. The problem is when it gets prolonged. The problem is when we don't have the tools and the techniques on how to deal with it, how to handle it. And that's why we are here for you to help you and support you. So please understand your anxiety first. To combat exam stress first, you need to understand the reasons behind that heightened, that magnified anxiety. This is a must. Then you can establish methods to reduce the pressures you're feeling. But the first step is for you to understand it. Only then you can manage it. Researchers have uncovered some common explanations for this. Low levels of motivation, lack of preparation and planning, high expectations from self and others, competition with your peers. And I feel for this generation because it look, look around us, there is so much pressure to succeed, so much pressure to fit in, so much pressure to perform that it is hard. I get it. It's, I have a teenager. I have a 16 year old. So I see, feel and experience the pressure every single day. And that's why the role of parents and teachers and educators is paramount because we have to support our children. We have to help them understand why they are feeling what they are feeling and not add to it. Sometimes I'm guilty of this. We tend to download our own stress and anxiety onto our children and we expect them to manage it effectively. So it's very important to understand it first so that you can then help yourself and help others. The difference between a student who allows stress to overwhelm them and someone who uses it to push them harder is what they do when they are facing that brick wall mid-study. Admirable students will pause, reflect, Choose a path that will help them overcome the stress, not just wait for the wave to come and engulf them. So here goes, we are going to identify 11 tips, simple, practical, powerful, inspiring tips. But then you have to do the work. The, the hard work has to be done by you. You have to take conscious, deliberate steps in order for you to overcome and deal with your stress better. So these are simple tools, like I said, that will help you achieve your goals. It's time of that year, or it may not be that time of the year when there is exam anxiety in the air. And what do you need to do? First, start with embracing a positive attitude. I know easier said than done, but you have to start with checking in with yourself, checking in with those thoughts. If your thoughts are negative, which they usually are because our automatic thoughts are negative, you will not be able to combat the stress and anxiety that you're feeling. So basically remember three things, catch, check, and change that negative narrative that is going on like a loop in your head that I'm a failure, I'm going to fail, I am not going to succeed, I'm not going to be able to pass this test, my future is doomed, everything is gloomy. I understand, we all feel this, 
these negative thoughts and which impact our feelings but we have to work hard on challenging these negative thoughts and that will only happen if you are aware that these negative thoughts are controlling how you're feeling so it starts with you checking in with yourself checking those negative thoughts working towards embracing a positive attitude there is no way to avoid the exam if you let the negative thoughts you know make a house in your head it's not going to achieve it's not going to help you achieve anything you will find it difficult to concentrate you will find it difficult to memorize you will find it difficult to succeed in your goals and no one can encourage you more than yourself so first step is start with positive thinking and telling yourself that okay i am feeling anxious i am feeling the stress but now i have to take positive action i have to think positive thoughts because my positive thoughts will make me feel positive and make and push me towards positive action so that i can conquer my stress and anxiety so this is number 1 and seek help seek help from those around you if you finding it difficult to change that negative narrative second and the most important and i tell my teenager that set a healthy routine i cannot underscore it enough you need to take responsibility for setting that healthy routine and the magic word is follow it through sometimes we are great at setting up those healthy those healthy routines and those healthy timetables but we are not able to follow them through if i will not stick with it and follow it through it's of no use find out your power hour some people are alive and active and energetic in the morning so am i so if that's your power hour set that time in the morning if your power hour is at night perfectly fine however set a healthy time table so that after let's say midnight or ideally by 11 pm lights shut no device usage you get your sleep and you are able to manage your routine and your time table This will not happen till the time you don't discover your power hour. So pause, reflect and think of that power hour and make sure that you set that structure. You make your to-do list. This is so important and I teach my all three children. It's very simple. Make a to-do list. Because when you make a realistic to-do list and you check those boxes in, it infuses you with dopamine. dopamine is a neurotransmitter happiness hormone that will help you feel motivated so make that list so that you can organize yourself organize your study time table and yourself better third a change in place of study really helps it really helps to change the scenery even for our work sometimes i if you see our videos i keep changing the location i keep changing the scenery because then again it helps you you know you feel better you feel more confident you feel more comfortable and believe me you start to feel even more productive because that change really changes the wiring of your brain and and you know sets you on a positive note and sometimes you get bored of the same environment so it's very very important to to be creative and and you know like i put lights in my happy space and and i put some paintings and some some flowers and and just that ch- little change propels you it helps you fourth get enough sleep sleep is health and it is the most important medicine for you i know that you know some of us struggle with prioritizing sleep but again science is saying is research is saying is psychology is saying it you have to prioritize your 8 hours sleep if you don't do that it will impact your emotional and your mental well-being and our corona has taught us also well that this is non negotiable we have to take care of our sleep and if we don't it's going to impact our health in ways that we all know fifth eat a healthy diet i know it seems too simple and it seems you know we tend to dismiss the simple stuff that oh yeah this is not not new knowledge but please understand if you are stu- a student experiencing stress and anxiety food giving your mind giving your brain super food and protein is important because that is what is going to help you in 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 performing better and being more creative and being more productive avoiding sugary food processed snacks and only spike all these things will only spike your blood sugar so you need to avoid it otherwise you tend to feel sluggish and this is not no not new knowledge for any of us everyone 
the, the sixth point is everyone has that one friend, your go-to friend, someone who after you talk to, you feel better. Somebody who motivates you, somebody who encourages you, find that one person. You don't need too many. Even if you have that one person who's there for you, you can pick up the call, the phone and talk to that person and call that person. That is enough for you to share whatever you've studied in that short period of time. And you can discuss and share notes too. And that will help both of you. Seventh, it's always easy to study the stuff that you already feel comfortable with when you should really be tackling the tough stuff. So make sure that you do the tough stuff first so that it's out of the way and you've done things in a systematic way. Take mock tests so that you're able to you know, constantly revise whatever you have learned. Make notes, test your current knowledge, make sure that you talk to your teachers and get that kind of support. Eight, it is so important to revise, 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 revise is the most important thing you can ever do. You've already covered some portions. Take time, manage your time in such a way that you don't overdo it. The key is don't over revise, but yes, revise. Go slow and don't keep revising the same stuff over and over again because we have muscle memory. Whatever you've done well once or twice or maybe thrice will get stored in your brain. Revise that chapter. That is tough for you. That is hard for you. And don't be afraid of doing this work because this work requires commitment. This work requires effort. This is hard work and this hard work you need to put so that you learn those effective study tips and tricks to boost your grades, to boost your confidence and, and enhance your self-esteem. This is so important. Ninth, take a stroll after long study hours. Now we have the 20 to 20 rule, which means after every 20 minutes, take a 20 second break. Jim Quick, who is a brain coach and he's a champion at talking about how to study right, take breaks. All he says is that our brain is so sharp, but we are already living in our minds. We need to use our brain in a manner that will make us feel more fresh. Start the, 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 the brain bulb again so that that light comes up and you are feeling relaxed and there is more room for you to cram and learn. Take those breaks. Take a friend along for that break. Again, that break is so important that will help you learn better. So do that work. It's very, very important. I take a break every 20 to 30 minutes. I go for a walk. I, I listen to my favorite song. I do 100 jumping jacks, whatever it takes, but take that break. Tenth and the most important, exercising is again non-negotiable. We have to focus on Taking care of our body and that 30 minute workout will only infuse you with endorphins, the happy hormones that will help you concentrate better. So no excuses. We have to focus on it and we have to make sure that we exercise and make it a priority. Last but not the least, do not compare your performance. And again, this is for parents also. Do not, please, it is my humble request, do not make any comparisons with your neighbor, your relative, your friend's child, whoever it is, because every child is unique and special and has his or her own learning abilities. And it's our role as parents, as educators, as teachers to help our children by helping them understand what is their uniqueness, what are their strengths, what are their areas of work and help them in that space. Setting unrealistically high expectations will only cause more stress and more angst in our lives and in our children's lives. So our humble request is keep the comparison away. We need stress. We need a certain amount of pressure, but in moderation, in small doses, so that it propels us towards our goal. It motivates us. It keeps us going and we keep pushing harder. But the problem is, let it not enter the over zone. Let it not enter the zone where it becomes excessive. So while promoting healthy competition and as a parent and as a life skills trainer, this is what I tell myself every single day and people around me. It is, it is our prime responsibility to help our children reduce the stress and anxiety, which is already there, provide them with positive reinforcement, support, and encouragement and you will see that it will help your child go miles and miles and miles. I hope this 
was a useful video for everyone. Please reach out to us if you need any more support and help. We are here for you. Please keep liking, subscribing and thank you for all the love and thank you for all the, the cheerleading that everyone does for happiness is love. We are ever so grateful and here I'm going to end this video and share with you many, many more for our students, for parents, for professionals, for teachers, for educators, for everyone, because now is the time where we all need to offer each other support to help each other communicate better, connect better and create more happiness and joy. Keep smiling, keep shining and keep inspiring.